Aaron first encountered me at Stanford in 2005 and promptly posted a very funny account about looking for my ghostly presence. Uh, the, uh, he tells the story of how he had a choice between taking a final exam and, uh, or coming to hear me talk. Uh, as it turned out, he did both. Uh, we then would meet uh, over the years for a long talk uh, every now and then, and, and my responsibility was essentially to provide him with, with a reading list, a reading list for, for life. And then about uh, two years ago, uh, Quinn and Aaron came to Connecticut, and uh, he told me about the four and a half million downloads of scholarly articles. And my first question was, why isn't MIT celebrating this? <laughs> And I told him, uh, actually, I had a problem with what he did, because probably of those four and a half million scholarly articles, only about one or two thousand deserved reading. <laughs> was a quality control mechanism <laughs> and, uh, 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 that would ensure that uh, the material deserved to be downloaded by Aaron. And uh, so I suggested that he combine uh, his search uh, or his download of articles with the link uh, to the, uh, the citation index and uh, so he could uh, download articles that had been cited more often than, than just by the author's mother. <laughs> Either at that, that meeting, or maybe at the next one, uh, we, we talked a little bit about the legal case, or I think it was right before he was indicted, uh, and he asked me if I knew Bill Bowen. I think he knew the answer to that question. Um, Bill Bowen uh, was... Uh, President of Princeton when I was uh, started out and was uh, uh, enormously uh, helpful uh, uh, in, in my uh, career there. Uh, he then became president of the Mellon Found Foundation and uh, uh, he had retired from the Mellon Foundation, but he was asked by the foundation uh, to handle uh, the problem of JSTOR and Aaron. So I wrote Bill Bowen, uh, an email about it. And uh, I said first that, that Aaron is a treasure. And then I told a, a personal story about how I had done some illegal hacking uh, as a student and been caught at it and what happened. In 1962, my housemate and I uh, uh, invented uh, the first uh, a blue box, that's a, a device that allows for free, uh, und un undetectable, unbillable, uh, long distance telephone calls. <laughs> and we, uh, we got this uh, um, up and played around with it, and uh, uh, the, at the end of our research came when we uh, completed what we thought was the, long, the longest long distance telephone call ever made, <laughs> which was from Palo Alto uh, to New York time of day via Hawaii. <laughs> well, during our uh, experimentation, uh, AT&T uh, on the second day, it turned out, had tapped our phone. And, uh, but uh, it wasn't until about six months later when I got a call from a gentleman, uh, um, uh, A.J. Dobbs, senior um, uh, security person at, at at and and I said, I know what you're calling about. And uh, so we met, and he said, you know, what we're doing is a crime. Uh, 
network and all that. Um, and uh, but I knew it wasn't uh, it wasn't serious because he actually cared about the kind of engineering stuff and complained that the tone signals we were generating were not up to standard <laughs> because they recorded them and played them back into the network to see what numbers they were uh, 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 we were trying to reach and uh, they couldn't uh, they couldn't break through the, some of the noise of our signal. Uh, the upshot of it was that, uh, oh, and he asked her why we went off the air after about three months. Uh, because this was to make long distance telephone calls for free. And I said, well, it was, we regarded it as an engineering problem, and we made the longest, long distance telephone. And so that was it. And so the deal was that, as I explained in my email to Bill Bowen, the deal was that uh, we wouldn't try to sell this. Uh, we were told that, uh, 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 I was told that uh, uh, crime signal, uh, uh, signal gates would, would uh, pay a great deal for this. Uh, uh, we wouldn't uh, uh, do any more of it, and that we would uh, turn our, our, our equipment over to AT&T. And so they got a, uh, um, a, a complete uh, vacuum tube oscillator kit for making long distance uh, phone calls. Uh, but I was grateful for uh, 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 AJ Dodge and, and I must say even at and uh, that they decided not to wreck my life. And so uh, I told Bill Bowen, uh, that he had a great opportunity here to not wreck somebody's life. And uh, of course, he thankfully did the right thing. Aaron's unique quality was that he was marvelously and vigorously different. There is a scarcity. That. Perhaps we can be all a little more different too. Thank you very much.